Let's face it, starting on TRT is like dropping a high performance engine into your car. Your power's back up, but what happens when your cooling system can't keep up with all that extra power? The engine starts to overheat and things start breaking. On TRT, your estrogen is kind of like the temperature gauge. For many guys on testosterone, it's often public enemy number one. You're told to block it, crush it, destroy it at all costs. What if I told you this war on estrogen is a big mistake and it may be the very thing that's causing you to be more tired, have issues with libido, and have more joint aches? Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Terranell and I'm here to help you optimize and improve your health. Today, we're popping the hood on estrogen so you can stop fearing it and start fine-tuning your system like a master mechanic. By the end of this video, you should fully understand what the science says about high and low estrogen and how to test for it in the right way and also find that performance sweet spot for yourself. Okay, so here's the biggest thing you really need to internalize about your TRT and estrogen. You absolutely need estrogen to feel good. The goal is not to have zero estrogen that will make you feel just as miserable as having super high estrogen, if not worse. And we know this from landmark human studies that really analyze and look at this distinction. The real goal is finding the optimal balance. Feeling puffy and moody could definitely be from high E2, but having achy joints, maybe super low libido, brain fog, are also classic signs of super low estrogen. And it's often from using estrogen blockers too judiciously and you're crushing that estrogen. Optimal living and optimal health is gonna be found in the middle, not at the extremes. Now I realize this can be somewhat complex and there's different opinions on this. And so if you want to learn more about how to optimize all your TRT labs, including the estrogen, and truly master this process to dial everything in, check out my comprehensive guide, Mastering Your TRT Journey. It covers everything we're talking about here today, plus more. You can find a link for it in the description below. All right, so let's break this down with a little bit of science to back us up. So first of all, why does testosterone even turn into estrogen? Well, this is a natural process. Actually, your body uses an enzyme called the aromatase enzyme to convert a portion of that testosterone into estradiol or E2. More testosterone in the system, the more estradiol you're going to get. It's basically the raw material for the estrogen to be produced. So E2 is naturally going to rise with going on testosterone replacement therapy. It's a normal process. The question really is how much is too much and what do we do in those scenarios? So when your testosterone dose is too high or you're just a high converter of testosterone into estrogen, those levels are definitely going to climb, leading to classic symptoms of high estradiol. So this can be like water retention and puffiness, having bloated or puffy face, you might have blood pressure issues as well. Gynecomastia is a really big one. So you can have puffy or sore nipples and potentially even growth of the breast tissue over long periods of time. Another common thing that we see is increased emotional volatility. So you may be feeling a little more moody, irritability, even crying for no reason or crying more frequently. It's common with high estrogen levels. Libido and erectile issues, yes, too much estrogen can definitely impair sexual function because it does have kind of a blocking effect on the testosterone too. What about the other side, symptoms of too low estradiol? Well, this is what happens when men panic and overuse aromatase inhibitors or perhaps they just got fed some poor advice. They crush their E2 into single digits and the consequences sometimes are more severe in some than others. I've had people that have low E2 We've overshot the mark and they don't even really notice it. So it is kind of individually based, but some of the symptoms that people do report when their estrogen is too low is painful, achy joints. Estradiol is crucial for joint health. It kind of acts like a lubrication and it's one of the common symptoms of low estradiol is joint aches. In fact, a lot of times when men go on testosterone, they notice that they have less joint pain and that's likely from the estradiol levels going up in conjunction with the testosterone. Libido and erectile function, this is a big one, and we talked about this for high E2 as well, but without adequate E2, most men will experience very low sex drive. Brain fog, anxiety, depression, certainly very low estrogen can also contribute to this. 
but so can low testosterone. So we really have to be careful about evaluating all these different markers. And that's why in the context of where you're at and starting testosterone and where the labs are being drawn, all that factors into how we decipher what the reason is and what the next best steps are going to be for you. So you may be thinking, how do we actually know that this is true? How do we know that everyone's going to respond this way? And the answer is we don't for sure, but we don't also have to guess because a landmark study published in the New England Journal of Medicine clarified some of these things perfectly. They gave men testosterone, but in some groups they used an estrogen blocker, an aromatase inhibitor, to block the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. And the results were pretty clear. They found that while testosterone itself was primarily responsible for increasing muscle mass and increasing strength, the estradiol was essential for regulating body fat. And when E2 was blocked, body fat actually increased. And critically, both testosterone and estradiol were required for normal libido and erectile function. When either was deficient, sexual function actually went down. So this study pretty much validates that trying to eliminate estrogen is a massive mistake for your health, but that doesn't mean we want sky-high estrogen either. So what is the actual optimal level of estradiol or E2? And this is the million-dollar question. And while labs often list the normal range as somewhere around like 20 to 40 picograms per ml, a symptom-slash-lab-based approach is far superior than just looking at a number on the page. I think even more critical to this question is just like your testosterone levels are going to have a peak and a trough after the injection, so does your estradiol. And why is that? Well, because E2 is created from testosterone. So the higher the testosterone, the more aromatization and therefore the more E2 you're going to have. As your testosterone levels fall into the trough levels before your next injection, so will the E2. Same with the peak. This means that a single estradiol marker is really just a snapshot in time. You have to kind of extrapolate from that one number what else is going on. A high E2 reading at the peak might not be a problem necessarily. It may be perfectly fine if your trough E2s are in a good range and you don't really have any high estrogen symptoms. The context is always critical here. So what I like to use is that your optimal E2 level is the level at which you have no high E2 symptoms, no low E2 symptoms. For one person, that might be at 25 picograms per ml. Another might be at 45 picograms per ml. For me in my clinic, symptoms are just as important of a guide as your lab metrics. Many clinicians find that monitoring the ratio between total testosterone and estradiol is more useful than looking at E2 in isolation. I don't use this approach, but either way, always use the ultra-sensitive estradiol assay for your blood test. I've discussed this in other videos too, but this is a more superior way to accurately check your E2. So you may wonder what's absolutely too low and what's absolutely too high. I would say anything below 20 is definitely too low. If you're on testosterone and trying to block it, if it just naturally is at 20, doesn't mean you need to take extra estrogen. What's absolutely too high, I would say above 50 picograms per ml is where I'm going to start to get more concerned about lowering that E2 even in the context of not having a lot of symptoms. You have to know what the risks and benefits are. If you're fine with the risks, you can let it ride. Remember, if you're serious about wanting to optimize all your lab metrics, including finding your personal estrogen sweet spot, my comprehensive guide, Mastering Your TRT, is a good resource to get you moving in the right direction and help you pinpoint where that's going to be for you. Find a link in the description below. The bottom line is I think we just need to stop fearing the estradiol. Both high and low levels can cause problems, and the goal is to find the symptom-free, somewhat Goldilocks zone for you. Remember that your E2 level fluctuates, so you want to make sure you're testing and interpreting your results in the context of your last injection. And since managing your high estrogen and low estrogen is often a direct result of getting your testosterone dose right in the first place, your next best step to mastering this process is to watch this video right here, TRT dose, what optimal level is for you.